from this module you will know about the stages of emotional development learn about the development of primary emotions and self conscious emotions understand emotional development in adolescence if you observe newborn infants there are limited emotions observed in them when in pain hungry or left alone they cry or show distress they are attentive towards people and objects in their surroundings also they express positive emotions like happiness and satisfaction when they are taken care of fed properly they appear to be relaxed and satisfied and they may also smile however this limited range of emotions is translated to the full range within first 3 years of life for example they show the emotions related to shame when they are unable to successfully complete a task and emotions related to pride when they are able to for fully understanding emotional development behavior of an individual or a toddler must be examined at emotional as well as cognitive level as emotional development is also related to cognitive development indeed emotions are used for understanding cognitions and cognitions for emotions for instance when an infant sees a dwarf walking toward him he shows a surprised face what is he surprised at he is not surprised when he sees a young child or an adult of normal height walking towards him but he is when it is someone with the height of a young child but the face of an adult surprise reveals to us who observe infants that the infant knows has cognitions about the relationship between facial configuration and body height the discrepancy is what elicits surprise and informs us that the infant knows about the face body relationship cognition that is most important to the development of human emotions is that of self knowledge or a meta representation or idea that this is me this idea of me is the same as consciousness we measure it by observing where the infants toddlers recognize themselves in mirrors the emergence of self knowledge or consciousness alters old emotions and gives rise to new ones to understand emotional development then means that we have to understand cognitive changes and in particular the self development while discussing emotional development we can think of two broad types of emotions those that we call basic or primary emotions and those that we call self conscious emotions the former are emotions that most likely are present in humans and other animals the latter that is self conscious emotions require elaborate cognitions including the central one having to do with the consciousness that is the idea of me let me give you a model of emotional development most of emotional life emerges over the first 3 years Although not all emotions appear the great majority are present in the 3 year old this is not to say that other emotions do not emerge after 3 years of age they do however the major framework exists by the age of 3 the development can be divided into 3 stages one early or primary emotions two the development of self consciousness and three self conscious emotions for example in the first 6 months the primary emotions appear and the first to emerge around 1.5 years or 1 and a half years consciousness emerges which gives rise to the first set of self conscious emotions around the age of 2 and a half years the child acquires and is able to use societal standards and rules in order to evaluate their behavior this second cognitive milestone along with consciousness initiates another set of self conscious emotions which are referred to as self conscious evaluative emotions so first let's deal with early or primary emotions that are present within the first 6 months or so in life initially an infant shows only two emotions crying when distressed alone or hungry and pleasure when fed paid attention to and satisfied the infant is interested 
and attentive to the environment from the beginning of his life and there may be a three-way distribution of emotions with pleasure at one end and distress at the other end and interest being a separate dimension. The emotion of joy may emerge at the time the child is three months old. They may show smiling or excited or happy behavior when they experience familiar people and or events. Very early, smiling to people and sounds appear to be reflective in nature. For example, sighted and blind infants do not differ in their smiling behavior in the first three months of life. Later, however, smiling faces become more associated with pleasant events that the infant sees, such as the face of its mother, father or older sibling. Smiling also now takes place when the infant is played with. Therefore, smiling after two months is not reflective and is related to the emotion of joy or happiness. The emotion of sadness also appears around three months of age mainly in situations of withdrawal or loss of desired objects or actions. Also, a three-month-old infant may also appear sad when he is not inter interacting with his mother. For example, when mothers sit opposite their three-month-olds and play with them, smiling faces, even laughter can be observed. However, this laughter and smiling turns to sadness and even anger when the infant's mother turns away from them. At this point, the child often becomes sad and in some cases even starts to cry. This sad expression disappears once the mother starts again to interact with the child. Disgust also appears in its early form. Disgust is seen when infants spit out and try to get rid of unpleasant tasting or smelling objects placed in their mouths. This disgust face appears to be a defensive reflect designed to help get rid of food which does not smell or taste good to the infant. Given that there is little hand mouth or grasping coordination, the infant's ability to spit out something unpleasant is an important adaptive response. As we will see, this early form of disgust becomes utilized later when it then reflects learned taste and smell aversion such as specific food preferences. Hence, till the time the child is three months old, he or she has already begun to understand and appropriately display the emotions of sadness, interest, disgust and joy. The emotion related to anger is found to emerge around four to six months. Anger is mainly observed in form of facial expressions in situations where a child is irritated or frustrated, especially when their movements are blocked. Even anger emerging from blocking the movement is also observed in infants of two months, particularly in case of their learned behaviors. For example, a two-month-old child can be taught that when they pull their arm to which a string has been attached, a slide appears on the screen. Thus, every time the child pulls, a picture goes on. After only three to five minutes, most two-month-olds learn the association between moving their arm and a picture appearing. Once they learn this, they show anger if we arrange it so that the picture does not come back. The initial expression of anger is reflected in this study. Anger is not only related to facial expressions but also includes bodily responses and this emotion aims to get the better of a problem. It should be noted that anger's definition specifies that the individual needs to have knowledge regarding the connection of the arm pull and picture going on. So the manifestation of anger at this early stage in life shows the infant's knowledge acquisition as compared to this ability. It is said that anger is only adaptive when the response is elicits is functioning in subduing the barrier that is obstructing an objective. The emotion related to fearfulness appears later in life. It is around 6 to 8 months, although it appears to reach its peak at 18 months, when measured as fearfulness at the approach of a stranger. Just like other emotions, this also indicates the cognitive development of a child. 
that is for displaying fearfulness to a particular person, object or situation. A child should understand the stimulus and be able to compare it with other stimuli which don't elicit the emotion of fearfulness in them. For instance, a child has to compare the face of a person approaching him to the other people he knows. Then only he can show fear towards a stranger which displays that the child has developed a memory of faces. Hence, the fear of which situations won't appear till the time the child is able to do comparison among stimuli. Around six months of age, a child begins to show fearfulness. Emotions related to surprise appear around the time when the child is six months old and mainly occurs in situations when the series of events is different from unexpected events. Surprise is also observed in situation of discovery that is aha experience. In the studies where children were instructed for pulling string for changing a picture, it was seen that the children showed the expression of surprise when they made out the arm pull is causing another picture to appear. Surprise here, here reflects insight. During the initial six to eight months of a child's life, his emotional behavior implies the appearance of the early emotions, which are also referred as primary or basic emotions. The cognitive processes that underlie these early emotions consist of perceptual abilities including discrimination and short-term memory and are representative abilities of some sort. Although these cognitive processes are necessary, it is likely that many species in the animal kingdom possess them. They do not require the elaborate cognitions that are involved in the next set of emotions. For example, anger is elicited in animals as well as infants when a learned response to obtain a goal is blocked. Infants show angry faces when the string pull does not produce the picture and rats show angry behavior when learned path to food is blocked. Self-conscious evaluative emotions The development and understanding of self-conscious evaluative emotions are determined by the development of various cognitive abilities. The initial step is for the child to understand the goals, standards, norms of the society and the family. The next step is to ensure a sense of self that is self-identity. And ultimately, he should have the ability to judge the self with respect to the goals, standards and norms and then determine success or failure. In the process of self-evaluation, deciding if an event is because of his own actions is the first step for a child. For instance, if a child has broken a toy when he was operating it, then the child might blame himself for damaging it. Or he might think that they, the toy was already damaged before he started using it. In the former case, the child is making an internal attribution and later an external attribution. Now the type of attribution made is highly impacted by the current situation and the individual's characteristics. Emotions of shame are felt when an individual judges his behavior or actions with the standards, norms and rules of the society as well as the family. This emotional state is characterized by pessimism, negativity, pain and it also makes the individual confused and interferes with his daily life. Because it's highly intensive in almost all the cases, the individual wants to get rid of this emotional state because it disrupts their self system. Shame is not a result of an event but an individual's interpretation of the event. Also, it doesn't matter if the event is public or private. The emotional intensity is similar. Shame is different from guilt in a way that shame is a result of a global attribution while guilt arises from specific attribution. Guilt or regret occurs in a situation where an individual appraises his actions as a failure and focuses on some features of self which he believed have led to the failure. The cognitive attribution associated with guilt concentrates on the behavior of self instead of the totality of self. Hence, the emotions or feelings created by guilt are not as extremely pessimistic as they are in shame. 
Actually, emotions of guilt are mostly related to an action or a behavior that can be undertaken by the child to amend the failure and avoid indulging into the behavior again. Hence, the emotional feeling in guilt is less intense and may dissipate easily. The physical behavior involved in guilt and shame is also different. When an individual is feeling shame, he assumes a body posture of avoidance and makes an attempt to hide or disappear. While in guilt, an individual is moving around in space in an attempt to amend the action. This difference in physical manifestation between shame and guilt help to differentiate between these emotions and in assessing individual differences. Embarrassment as a consequence of evaluation of one's actions called evaluative embarrassment is closely related to shame. Embarrassment and shame differ from each other in terms of their intensity. Shame is stronger and troubling. Embarrassment is less intense and doesn't disrupt thoughts and actions of an individual. Embarrassment doesn't lead to wishes of hiding, disappearing or dying in an individual, but his body assumes an avoidance posture and an ambivalent approach. Behaviors involved in embarrassment are different from shame. Hence, behavioral perspective considers them two different emotions. The type of failed task may decide the intensity of the emotion and may also lead to the difference in intensity of shame and embarrassment. For example, an individual might consider failing to take care of the needs of a child as more important than failure to drive a car properly. So the failure of less significant roles, standards, norms and goals lead to a person feeling embarrassed rather than feeling shamed. So after knowing these emotions, let's talk about emotional development in adolescence. During adolescence, emotional development is mainly targeted at building a consistent and realistic sense of self in various contexts, coping with stress, interpersonal relationships and managing emotions. And identity not only includes how an adolescent perceives himself at the moment, but it also includes what we call possible self, that is what he may be or what he would like to be. Usually developing a sense of self-identity was thought to be the primary objective of adolescence. However, now it is consented that identity development neither starts nor stops in adolescence. Still, adolescent stage is the initial stage where an individual has the cognitive ability to systematically organize through the information and understand his own self and his qualities that make him distinctive. Let's see how the development of self-identity takes place. The concept of identity has two components. One is self-component which includes an individual's beliefs about himself. For example, one physical attributes, goals in life, roles in various relationships, interests and hobbies and values. Another is self-esteem, which is determined by the evaluation of the self-concept. For every adolescent, development of self-esteem is a unique process and there are various trajectories on which it can go. Self-esteem is also relatively stable during adolescence and it may gradually worsen or improve depending upon the life situations of an individual. The factors that have been already discussed highly impact the development of identity as well as self-esteem during adolescence. And experimentation with the perceptions of people, objects or situations around an adolescent helps him to attain a realistic sense of his identity. The approach taken by each adolescent varies considerably. There is a lot on cultural influence on emotional development. In different cultures, people show some similar emotional characteristics and they also show many different emotional characteristics. With cross-cultural research, some discrete rules regarding emotional expression, behavior and functioning have been brought out. For instance, in case of a novel stressful event or situation, children belonging to Korea or China exhibit more fearful behavior have anxious reactions as compared to children belonging to Australia, Canada or Italy. 
children of China were also more committed and have an internal locus of control as compared to children of North America in their initial years of life. These differences in cultures can be attributed to factors like socialization patterns of the society, the family and attitude, expectations and practices of family members. The sense of right or wrong in different cultures is different. For example, a child being cautious and or reactive make a child's parents happy in China. However, it leads to disappointment and even rejection for a child's parents in Canada. Also, different cultures reinforce or punish different behaviors based on the qualities it values. For instance, culture that emphasizes on competitiveness and following personal goals in life tend to reinforce more aggressive and coercive behavior whereas culture that values group harmony tend to punish those behaviors. Research have revealed many similarities as well as differences in behavior, expression and functioning of emotions in children in various cultures. However, information related to beliefs and values of a particular culture related to a child's emotional development is still limited. So, the summary points go like this. Firstly, emotional development generally occurs during the initial years of life, specifically first three years. The development is usually divided into three stages. First, development of six primary emotions. Second, development of self-consciousness. Third, development of self-conscious evaluative emotions and development of a sense of identity and self-esteem are the major markers of adolescent emotional development. The parents and family members influence on a child's emotional development. Many couples are about to have a baby. They are prepared very well. They have bought clothing, diapers, formula, toys and many other things. Unfortunately, many parents forget about their role in their children's emotional development. Emotional development is an essential area that parents have to be very careful with. This type of development refers to a child's ability to manage the way he feels, identify and understand his own feelings, manage the way he behaves, accurately read and understand the feelings of others. To be empathetic, to build and maintain good relationships with friends, family members and other people in general. Children that have all these skills will have a successful personal and professional life. Parents and family members should pay attention to the following instructions. They should help their children identify emotions by discussing to their kids about what feelings are, playing games, reading stories and using various daily opportunities. Parents can explain their children how others may feel if their toy is broken. But there are many other examples. Parents and other family members should teach their kids ways to cope with emotions, mainly if they are negative. Parents should also explain their children why it's not right to hit others. They should also give them alternatives. This way, a child will learn to control his emotions and he'll also know what to do when he is involved in various situations. Children should also know about gender roles. Generally, parents do that by dressing their girls in red or pink and their boys in blue. Nonetheless, this isn't enough. It's very important, mainly as kids grow up, to know the differences between boys and girls. If they won't manage that, they'll be isolated by their peers or will interact viciously as they grow. Family members and parents can help their children do that through discussions, television shows and many discussions. Helping kids put their feelings into words and encourage them to discuss about situations that make them feel happy 
angry, worried or excited. Communication is one of the most important things. Those kids who cannot interact or talk with others will have to struggle socially. Children should know how to talk to other people, how to respect them, how to understand our body language. All these things will help them have great social interactions in years to come. Additionally, they'll have a positive attitude towards life and their communication skills will be improved. Obviously, this will help them with their personal and professional life. Parents can become more bonded to their kids when their children are infants. If they respond fast to their infant's cries, respond generally in a positive way, guess what their child needs when he cries and spend more time more quality time interacting with their kid